Good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, thanks, Min, for the introduction. And I also would like to thank uh, Pam uh, Sarawak Chapter, together with the Nippon Paint, uh, in sponsoring, uh, in giving me this opportunity to come and share some ideas with you. Well, first of all, I mean, I think Min has made the necessary in introduction. Uh, I have been in the market for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, I mean, year 2000, I left uh, William Lim as one of the directors, and that was the time uh, I also finished this project, which was the Gallery Hotel in Singapore. Uh, it's fun in a sense that it's an interesting hotel where we actually uh, invested a lot of energy. It took me close to about 10 years. And we actually had fun in dealing with uh, many different shapes, different forms, different urban responses and different uh, innovative ideas and what uh, part of the building that, uh, which glass window sticking up <laughs> elements here and there, interesting interior. But the question is that at that point of time, uh, I was also thinking uh, what do all these form, shapes, means, and to what extent that is the way to, I mean it's more of a soul searching to try to understand uh, what design is all about. And from there onward, I start to decide that I should set up my own practice to rethink uh, things that I've been doing. And to what extent is there a more fundamental interest or fundamental way of doing things that to me, I think is uh, more appropriate. Uh, of course, uh, I'm always interested in trying to understand the relationship between form, space, and architecture, and also uh, how to go about searching for architecture that is tropical and that is sustainable. And of course, when I start to look at a lot of uh, uh, grandmaster, the first generation, through their lifetime, they also design things in many different directions. And why do they do it that way? And is there anything interesting that we can learn about it? And to what extent when you design things, uh, is there only one form of expression or wh whether there are multitude of expression that you can explore? And that, that's where I start to uh, re-look at many things and I also start to conclude that in terms of design, uh, we should keep a very open mind. We should keep a very open mind and explore uh, different ideas. And for me, as far as design is concerned, design is actually a problem-solving exercise. And usually in our design, uh, we set up certain things that we call based on some scientific uh, program, is called research program. And from there, we input various different elements, various different uh, things that we think is pertinent to the design. And from there, we start to uh, work on it and start to find out whether there's any innovative relationship or whether there's certain innovative ideas that can come out, out of all this uh, careful study. And of course, at the working level, we always like to sculpt things, sculpt space, and we also like to play with constructions and to see how some of these things can lead to some uh, ideas that are, of that are of interest to us and sometimes ideas that we have not even thought about it as it go along. So on the other hand, uh, when I was uh, setting up my own practice, I was interested also to explore many, many different techniques of design. And that's where you know, uh, I start to discover a lot of things. For the first few years of my own practice, uh, there's a lot of experimentation and exploration uh, uh, that I've gone through. From there, I start to learn different techniques, different way of doing things. If I have to do something that is uh, organic, how to go about putting it together, th the language of how to put things together, those uh, require time to understand. And that's how I begin uh, the whole journey as I put it, in this lecture is actually a learning journey for me. And I suppose uh, when Min told me that uh, there are a lot of uh, very uh, young architects around and students here, so perhaps this is also a journey that I would like to share with you. Uh, the random order is something that I think is important because it gives you freedom in a sense that you are not uh, restricted by certain way of uh, constraining yourself. But on the other hand, that when you start to work on random order, you also need to know the language very well in such a way that it can actually become an interesting system, a system that can uh, help you in your design. Uh, this is a very small little project when we started our practice. Uh, these are uh, just a Teflon cover walkway over a bridge, and we actually 
try to understand, we understood how the design forces is acting and how various elements can be manipulated in such a way that it translates to different uh, member, structure member of different sizes, dif uh, doing different things and things like that and start to create uh, interesting uh, design solutions. This is how it looked like as it go along. And when we later on translate that into some of the screen design, uh, to the left hand side is one of the buildings we completed a couple of years back. The screen uh, design is uh, random in such a way that it gives a very interesting soft touch as compared to a lot of a very standard uh, curtain wall ribbon window uh, in the city center. So these are some of the details that we have gone through, a bit of construction details. We also explore a lot on fluidity. So these are some of the uh, curve uh, design language that we have tried on. And these are some of the uh, uh, spaces that we have sculpted in within the conservation house. I'll go on quite quickly because these are some of the earlier uh, elemental exploration that we have gone through, which will eventually show up in uh, a lot of the work that we have done. And these are some of the interesting spaces. And we also understand that when you start to do all the uh, fluid space, the relationship to landscape, the relationship to flow will be a lot more interesting. Of course, I mean, we, we always uh, have to deal with some pitch roof. In Singapore, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, we, we did this as a pavilion within a uh, housing estate. And the housing estate has a lot of uh, cover walkway, which is in pitch roof. And the client came to us saying that uh, if you were to take on the project, we have to do something in pitch roof. So we have to basically think out of the box as to see how pitch roof can be uh, done differently. So as you look at it, this pavilion is actually an assemblage of a series of a mono pitch roof. But through manipulation of form, shapes, and things like that, it starts to evolve into a very different uh, spatial experience and also become a small landmark uh, within an anonymous housing estate. And this is how the space can transform from something that's very heavy to something that's very light and thin and interesting spaces. And the, the overlapping of a form together with insertion of glass skylights and all that to enclose a space. And these are all open-ended. When air can flow through, it's, uh, it's quite a comfortable space to be in. But these are something that if you want to explore, you have to really understand the interrelationship of plain languages and, and, and going to really how to put things together and put it together nicely. And of course, these are uh, the open planner uh, direction, which I think a lot of people are familiar with, but it's also a very interesting language. And if you know how to do it very well, it does uh, open up a lot of uh, interesting articulations and, and spatial continuity from one space to the others. Lighting effect and some of the uh, composition that you can get out of this uh, design. And of course, in tropic, I think we always look at a uh, tropical big roof. A big roof is uh, more like the canopy, and we're always interested to see how it can be translated into a design that perhaps uh, will give a proper protection to the environment, and at the same time, it's naturally ventilated. And because of that, we derive a series of solutions which are mainly a large atrium, naturally ventilated atrium, which usually give the building a lot of uh, volume. And it's actually airspace, which is, of course, other than the roof is free. But to a lot of clients, they are very interested because it makes their building look very big. And these are some of the uh, natural ventilated space, also uh, shaded by big roof. Uh, this is a school, it's an international school. And of course, uh, we, we always uh, deal with projects that at time, you can't really predict how eventually the building will be used. So when you design a building, there's always, uh, in, always have to think of uh, capacity, what it can be used, and how to design something in anticipation of things that are not predictable. Especially uh, when you are designing community building, and the program can always evolve and change very rapidly. And sometimes a building may be able to, may have to take in a few thousand people at one go. But it doesn't happen every day, but it's sort of like you have to anticipate. And your design must be able to accommodate. You know, different function, different usages. 
And of course, uh, we like construction, we like craft, and this is uh, how we develop a screen. Uh, this is a house in Sentosa, and there's a series of uh, interesting things that we, were, we are working on. And from there, we evolve a series of uh, screening. Because from this house, when you look out to the cove, there are a series of uh, buildings uh, that is not very nice, and uh, my client doesn't like to look at them. So the issue is how to design a screen that at the same time respond to the curvilinear edge of the cove, at the same time screen off a series of unsightly things that perhaps the client wouldn't like to look at it when he's inside the house. And, and through that, we start to work on it, and there's a lot of uh, experimentation. And this is how we work with uh, workers uh, in the workshops. They are very much uh, part of our partners, and we have to produce a lot of drawings, and each of the fins will have to be documented as one drawing. So this is how, through very simple technology, we also have a budget constraint as well. There is a certain limitation. And within that, we try to permutate things, uh, vary things, and work out construction system, explore. And from there, at the end of the day, it will become a screen that is uh, hopefully serve the purpose of sunscreen and serve the purpose of uh, view and, and view correction and also give a very interesting soft image to the building. And of, of course, hopefully a functional, purposeful and a unique one. And of course, after all this uh, exploration, uh, we realized that if you were to start to look at things carefully enough, uh, there are a lot of uh, creative work uh, within constraint, you can actually deal with it at many levels, at the planning level, at the development of the design brief, at the design technique, searching of appropriate form, and there are many levels of innovation that you can establish, and from there, you can actually uh, create design, building that are purposeful, and at the same time, uh, relate better to the, to the user, and also make a contribution to a larger environment, both in terms of uh, energy conservation, sustainability as well. So these are a uh, learning journey that I will bring, uh, I will share with you. And a, a lot of these projects at this moment, uh, uh, they were inspired very much by the context. Since I'm coming to Cebu, I, I, I mean, uh, Kuching, there are, I know here there are a lot of uh, nice conservation houses as well. So I just uh, sieve out a few of our work. And these are the first series of work uh, is on conservation houses. And we were lucky enough to uh, manage to work on three conservation houses uh, in Emerald Hill area. Emerald Hill is just next to uh, Orchard Road, so it's uh, quite a prime uh, real estate. The first one we worked on uh, was a pair of conservation houses belong to two brothers. And they came to me saying that we were brothers. We are all very, uh, they're, they're really indeed very good brothers. They, they like one another very much. <laughs> And they told me that uh, we just need one design. If you give me one design and you'll be happy with both, you know, I mean, there's no issue. But later I really realized that uh, the, the negotiation of saying that we are brothers and we are very close to one another and we just need one design is actually a ploy to get a very good fee. <laughs> but once I start to work on the project, I realized that uh, the two families is actually very different. The elder brothers, and uh, uh, he's a very formal person. He likes things that are very, uh, very, 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 sort of like very formal in such a way that things should be at proper place, things should be neat and tidy, and you only have one kid. Well, I, the other brother, he has uh, three kids. And on top of that, he's, uh, being a younger brother, he's a lot more sentimental about history, and he's also an art collector. And they both uh, were born in this house, and uh, they grew up in this place as well. So for the brother, his uh, reference to the house is very different compared to the older brother. The older brother is prepared to guard the whole house out and do something that's contemporary and new. But the younger brother is a lot more uh, sentimental. So from there, we work with them, start to understand them, and start to uh, develop the spaces as we go along. Uh, this is the layout for the 65 uh, which is belong to the older brother. I think the key thing for me to talk about these houses is that what we are interested at this moment, even there are, there are two houses, 
next to one another, but the constant context and the constraints, actually the two long party wall. So how are we going to design houses or insertion that respect the party wall and highlight and bring out the, the, the uniqueness of the party wall? So it's technically in design, is an insertion of space, but it can be inserted in very different uh, 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 design uh, direction. This is a section, uh, high volume, a lot of spaces. And this is the uh, internal, basically if you were to look back in the courtyard, I, I mean in this uh, rear, the front and the back, there's actually an air well space and the air well space is enclosed and this is actually the internal space and this is one of the living room of, uh, within the house itself. And there are, this one, as I said, is sort of developed along a very planar aesthetic. Different articulation of element in such a way that the party wall is always being respected as the organizer of space. And of course, I mean, the, 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 the conservation house, you have to pay a lot of attention to the details, conserving each and every little element. And in Singapore, there's also this URA guideline and some people find it very restrictive. But sometimes if you understand it very well, you understand the intention, you can actually uh, respect it and appreciate whatever little thing that you do for a conservation house. So of course, uh, the other one is uh, 65. It's belong to the, the, the brother, uh, the younger brother. And the, one of the very interesting thing the younger brother would like to keep is the actual setting of the living room. And the, he even want to keep the exact furniture that he has inherited from the father. But the issue is that for the living room, which is in the front, uh, it's always quite deep and it's dark. And whenever you go to the house, you won't be able to appreciate the furniture. So the way we look at it is that in order to deal with this as an issue, the question is how to bring light into the living room in front. And from there, through our explorations and whatnot, we actually work on something that is fairly interesting, which we call a light scoop. So in the middle of the house, we have inserted a free-form sculpture that uh, serve to reflect the light throughout the entire house. And also we use glass extensively, so in such a way that the light can actually stream all the way to the living room. So this is the uh, idea of the light scoop. And light come through the skylight from the center of the house will be redistributed. And this light scoop also form a very interesting uh, structuring of space. And the living room now, uh, through the use of glass, the light can actually filter in and the living room now is quite bright. And he can actually appreciate uh, the furniture that he has. And this also brings in some new dimension as compared to you know, his earlier uh, appreciation of space when he was growing up. So this is how the composition of the house is being developed. This is looking from the rear to the front. So in a sense that the concept of the party wall, the party wall as an organizing element is always respected as the essential element in the design. The third one is actually a very interesting one. Uh, I happened to meet this guy when he happened to walk past the two houses and peep into the house. And he liked the 65, which is a little bit more organic shape. And this guy is a bachelor and he had a house a few doors down the line and he traveled a lot. And his requirement to us is that when he come back from traveling, he would like to go into a very dark space in such a way that he can actually recuperate. And that's how the whole thing started. And so for us, when we think about the center of the house is supposed to be the most secluded, so why not we design a cocoon inside the house? And from there, the idea of cocoon uh, start to come in and the whole, the rest of the maneuvering of the design spaces will move around that as a main team. So as a bachelor, uh, he, he, he doesn't require a lot of space. So a lot of space can actually be sculpted up to become an uh, interesting uh, design element. We enjoy this house, uh, the design of this house very much. And this is how the, 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 the cocoon is. From outside, you look at the house, it's just like any other house. But as you step in, uh, you will see uh, something quite different. This is basically the central circulation area uh, at, uh, closer to the rear. 
and this is how the spaces are being uh, structured. We use a lot of glass, so the glass will bring in transparency, and of course also the flow of space. This house is a lot smaller, so the use of glass will allow you to feel that the space is a lot bigger. Different view, different sculptings, detailings and things like that. This is one of the very interesting view when you look at the house from the rear. This is where the owner enter into the cocoon. He will go into a smaller space with a little skylight from top and from there you will move into a, as a transition before you enter into a cocoon where everything is shut and you can be really totally pitch dark. Some interesting of uh, play of light and form. The next project is a small madrasa that we work on. It was actually an interesting project uh, which we won through a limited competition. You see, in Singapore, we have uh, done a lot of land reclamation. The, the, this mosque is, uh, there was a mosque built about 100 years ago. It's a very small structure, which is next to the seaside for the fishermen. But as the uh, land reclamation progresses, uh, the, of course, the, the, the seafront disappeared. And subsequent to that, there are a lot of other developments uh, move along the line. And uh, the little mosque actually being dwarfed and disappeared. This is some of the uh, reclamation process. And these are some of the relics that are still uh, available. And in the in late 1980, there was a larger mosque being added next to the old mosque together with a small little madrasa. But what happened is that there's a lot more uh, uh, religious interest in such a way that the religious learning facility need to be expanded. And it, uh, the, the, the context when we were in is that the item B it was the original mosque, which is a single-story mosque. Together with item C, uh, there was a single-story madrasa. And the old mosque, which is supposed to be a very important heritage of the place, is lost, and nobody can see the mosque anymore. So on top of that, the facility that is required is actually quite a lot. And the competition brief actually allowed us to demolish the old mosque in order to fit in the, all the accommodation. So as you can see, the item D is uh, the bulk of space that we need to add in. And if you were to look at it, it's actually quite a difficult project if you don't have a very interesting idea on how to deal with the messing and the spaces. The item B, which is the historical mosque, would likely need to be demolished. This is also mainly because of the Kipla axis, and it created a very uh, certain type of geometry that at time may be a bit complicated to handle. What we have done is that uh, we look at the mosque itself and also the programming of the mosque, and there are a lot of uh, other religious facilities like the Hera uh, Haji, the Korban, and all sorts of other things, and how to go about dealing with the programming of space. And the programming of space requires a lot of external space to support it. And from there, we start to think that, you know, it's good if you can open up the space. And what we thought is that in order to relate to the road related to the surrounding and also open up the mosque, uh, the historical mosque to the public, a series of items need to be, take, to be carved out, the way we put it. And the issue is that after carving out and establish the relationship on the ground, how do we again find a way to put back the spaces that we carve out? And what we have done is that we actually look at that. It's become, we can look at it and create a series of freeform things that can uh, soften the ages and establish a very interesting relationship between new and old. And, and that's how we develop the program. And that in itself, create a lot of uh, interesting space as well in between. And on top of that, in terms of uh, sustainability, the smaller block will allow for natural ventilation. It will allow for a lot of uh, very good uh, lighting. And on top of that, the public space is being expanded. So these are a very simple program of uh, understanding what the design is all about and going through uh, keeping the heritage and 
developing the community, providing a lot of uh, flexible spaces. And these are a series of plans. And the interesting part is that some of the, uh, we call it the port, actually hover over the existing uh, single-story mosque. And that at time also form uh, very interesting compositions. And on top of that, the other significant thing is how to develop the screening. And we actually adopted some of the existing floral feature that is available in the uh, existing uh, centuries old mosque together with some uh, classical uh, Islamic pattern and see through mass fabrication uh, process and through also some uh, computer punching through the fabrication tools and playing with different depth of the uh, extrusion to create a certain type of uh, interesting and intricate uh, composition. And of course, I mean, looking at it, when you see the design is something look quite simple, but in terms of ma managing the construction process, it's quite tedious and complicated. And this is how the building looked like. Uh, the front one is, was the uh, uh, mosque built in the 1985 to 89, and the rear is the new addition. And this is how it looked like. And it also exudes certain uh, informal kampung feel. And also uh, the relationship between new and old, and it also resembles the, the, the playing uh, for resembling the idea of playing under the canopy of trees. Various uh, relationship, lighting, and this is mainly uh, one of the program here is also uh, for kindergarten. There's a lot of uh, time sharing and mixed use uh, in this program as well. And for the kindergarten, we actually put the playground on the roof. Some of the overall roofscape, detailings of the uh, uh, screening, composition shadows, and how the space are being used. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, as I said, there are a lot of time sharing, so the space is always very well used throughout the whole day. And also, uh, to extend the usages is that, you know, some of the uh, space is used as a drop-off porch, and when the buses are not around, it becomes a playground. So I think in Singapore, there's always a limited amount of space. And because of that, the programming itself has to be uh, very well thought through. So a lot of things will be uh, used in a multiple way. Uh, the next project is a, is a house. Uh, this is an a interesting house in such a way that uh, when you belong to a friend who is an art collector's when he bought this house, uh, he came to me, he basically asked me to tear down the whole house because, I mean, to he, he, he's, he's quite wealthy, so to him, money is no issue. He likes something new, he likes something that he can basically compare with his friend. And, and when he bought the house, it's mainly for the land. So when I look at it, I thought, okay, this is a house. Uh, it was built in about 1985 to 89, that period, where there's a lot of uh, tropical uh, uh, revivalism in such a way that a lot of people start to build houses in the late 80. And to me, it has no special conservation value, but it does embody certain history, history of our time, our recent history. And on top of that, the building is quite well built. There's no reason to really tear it down if you can find a way to deal with it. And on top of that, if you can find a way to convince the owner that it is worth keeping it. It is a task, but we managed to do it. And that's the client's brief, is to tear down, new build. But what we thought is that is the good thing is to basically have a new and old, a symbiotic relationship. And the interesting part we managed to convince this owner is that as an art, uh, as a art collectors, history to them is very important. The concept of time is very important. So I was telling him that he, collect, he, he specialized in collecting painting, uh, in, in, in the late, I mean, probably about 1900 to the contemporary. So because of that, the elements of time is very important. And I was telling him that, you know, when you actually keep this uh, building uh, and you have a symbiotic building, a new and an old, the element of time is there in such a way that you can display his painting within the house in such a way that different period, painting of different period can go to different areas here and there. 
And suddenly he realized that, hey, that in itself is a very interesting idea. So that also in itself will create a very unique house and not any other house that, you know, uh, we can always replicate for other owners or things like that. So because of that, it become a very enticing idea. And because of that, he said that why not we develop that as a, a way to go about designing this building. So what we have done is that we have gone through a uh, very detail, uh, which are the part of the building that we can afford to take down, and what are the area that we can uh, reuse, and what are the area that we need to insert as a new element, and how to go about doing all these things in such a way that at the end we will satisfy the owner's requirement. And the, the, the program came in quite handy as well. The existing house will be mainly used as bedroom. Because bedroom, you require a lot more privacy, so you don't require a lot of glass. But you come to the living room, dining room, and public area, you can afford to use a lot of glass. Because, you know, I mean, it's, it's the area that you want to invite uh, in the nature, have a better feel of space and, 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 and the spaciousness and things like that. So we went through all the in, uh, careful thought through all the different things that you want to keep, including a tree, and including how different elements can actually be developed. And these are a series of uh, slides that show you elements that we keep and how it was transformed along the line. I mean, just like, for instance, there are a lot, also there are a lot of engineering issues. Like you look at the car porch, previously it was a, uh, very heavy car pouch. We have to take away all the columns. We require a lot of transfer, and technically it can be done. And with that, we also create a new pouch and things like that, column freeze to, for him to park his car and things like that. So a lot of these things require a careful understanding and analysis, but in itself is a challenge. Now, of course, at the end of the day, uh, it's the symbiotic of new and old, and it's the journey between uh, new and old, so it's a dialogue. And the dialogue part is celebrated uh, through a glass bridge that connect the front and the back. And there are different uh, idea of uh, new and old, transparency, opaqueness, private, public, uh, the type of relationship that can be explored and, and developed within a, a small building like a house. Ventilations, plan sections, so this is how you approach the house now uh, from the uh, driveway, which is, uh, when you look at it, it still look fairly uh, old, but with hint of some uh, new elements are coming in. The car porch, the entrance to the house, when you enter the house, you'll see uh, the space beyond, which was the living room. And that's the bridge that connect the front to the back. And this is basically the, the, the main space, which is the living room with the swimming pool beyond. And we introduce a fair bit of uh, skylight, and with that, we can afford to have a good uh, vertical green planting and high volume of space, shadings and within. And when you are in the living room, you look back, you will see the old house. So there's always a dialogue between the new and old. The bridge. And I mean, this is more like the basement. The, the issue is that we had a swimming pool, which is uh, one side of it is made of glass. And there are also a series of potholes into the basement for the kids to peep up. And at times it can be uh, interesting. And this is some of the detailings and composition looking uh, from the swimming, uh, looking through the glass swimming pool into the living room area. Overall composition with the tree, the banyan tree that we have retained. Some detailings. We also, in a lot of our house, we had a series of uh, pre designed, open ended, unenclosed uh, window where we will allow the house to be ventilated throughout the whole day. Dialogue of new and old. The next project is uh, a project that we completed a couple of years back. It's, it's actually a, a, a very interesting project in such a way that we, 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 we always like to question. When the client comes to us, they tell us what they want. We always like to understand their program and from there start to have a dialogue as to, as to what they think is the best and how can we actually value it and contribute. 
This is really a commercial project. It's an office building, and every square inch uh, count, and the developer is very conscious about area. And this is in the heart of the city. Uh, when we look at the building, uh, it was built in 1972 or 75, which is about 40 over years uh, uh, till the time when we were working on it. And the building is fairly old. I mean, it's actually very old in such a way that the glass itself is a single plane. Uh, it emit, emit, emit a lot of uh, radiation. The aircon system, the leaf system are all nearly obsolete and they are in the process of breaking down. So to the owner, uh, the, the, the issue about this program is that in Singapore, there's for a lot of the old building in the city area, there's always some extra plot ratio that you can build on. So in this case, we can actually add another two floor on the building if you were to look at the entire uh, GFA calculation. So of course, the owner wants to maximize the whole thing. And since the building is very old, the easiest way is to knock down the whole thing and rebuild. Because whatever gain that they can gain from that two floor of space, they can actually use that to finance the total reconstruction. And to them, it's no brainer, it's very easy. So when you look at it, yeah, of course, I mean, that's the way to do it. And we are happy to do that. But on the second thought, when you start to look into that, there are also some other way, uh, perhaps a more interesting way of uh, keeping the building. You may not need, you may not be able to keep all, but how to go about keeping part of the building in such a way that you look at the existing building as a resource as compared to something that you just discard. So this is about the issue of sustainability and about the issue of conservation of resources. So you look at the floor plans, they are, they are, they are fairly, uh, the, in the olden day when people are designing the building, they are not so conscious about each and every square inch. So the staircase, the leaf, things are all not very well placed. So from there, we, 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 we had a few challenges when we deal with this project and probably I'll go through it uh, in a diagrammatic form. The issue is that we had uh, some extra area and the, 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 when you talk to the engineer, often the case they will say that when you want to add two more floors, your foundation will not be able to take it, which is true. And on top of that, when we start to look at it, if the issue, we also realize that the existing building is made of concrete. Concrete is a very heavy uh, uh, material. If you were to use some lightweight like steel bond deck uh, with, with thin concrete construction, it's a lot lighter. And from there, we start to think about what happened if you were to, instead of demolish the entire build, the building, we demolish a little bit more in such a way that by adding in uh, equivalent area of uh, GFA that we need to maximize the entire building, but the item C, which is will take out all the GFA, if the weight is the same as A, we don't have to really deal with the foundation. So these are all the creative uh, thinking that we have gone through. And we presented the whole idea to the developer and telling that, that if you were to do it along that line, we can actually uh, save a lot of uh, money in terms of uh, less area to build. And on top of that, uh, we also can shorten the construction time. So that all add together is actually profit to them. And through a very detailed analysis, we brought in the QS, go into details and whatnot. At the end, it was proven that we can actually save a substantial amount of uh, money by keeping the existing, uh, certain part of the existing building. And what I get out of that is that since the developer is going to save so much money, we request for additional fund for us to build some interesting curtain wall. So this is a bit of a trade-off, which, which the developer is fairly happy to do so. So this is the engineering drawing to show the yellow show the number of floor we demolished and the green are the number of floor that we have added. And we have also expanded the floor plate. We also modify the leaf shaft, uh, reposition the staircase and at the end make the building uh, totally efficient and is as good as a new building. Other than some of the existing floor which are in uh, blue, the floor to floor height may be slightly uh, shorter, but there are also other technical way to overcome it. This is how the building uh, in section, new and old. And 
You see, in order to extend the floor plate, that is also a very important exercise because when you look at the uh, office plan, uh, the larger the floor plate will also increase the efficiency of the building. This building is pre-stressed and that is also one of the reasons why the developer wants to demolish the building because nobody thinks that a pre-stressed building can be modified easily. But we have gone through with the engineer work in detail and found certain way of uh, dealing with the existing tendon and how to go about securing it, modifying it to allow for extension. And of course, the stress of the building will be slightly distorted and there are certain areas we have to use fiber wrap to increase the strength of the columns and things like that. These are technical way, but you know how to ask the right question, the engineer will be very happy to give you the solutions. And the other part is actually the facade itself. In a lot of the office building, uh, you are actually dealing with a sealed facade where the environment is totally sealed. Since this is a smaller building and there are the, a lot of buildings are centrally aircon as well. So at night in the evening, you really can't work in the office because there's no air and it's really very warm. What we thought through is that there is this way of playing with the curtain wall and the bay window through shifting and manipulation of all this window uh, strategy, we can create a small opening that can bring in ventilation. And some of this ventilation can actually not only help in, the, in providing fresh air, and at night we also can actually uh, do a fair bit of air exchange. And through certain ex extract system, uh, the, building, the air in the building can always be uh, modified and, and you always have fresh air in the morning. This is also to do with some uh, healthy working environment. And of course, these are some of the manipulation of the different component and prefabrication. I mean, a lot of these uh, window components are prefabricated and they are basically hoist and installed on site. And of course, when you talk about sustainability and the carbon footprint is very important. So we select a lot of material that are within uh, the region. A lot of material, in fact, are from uh, Malaysia actually. Like the curtain wall is actually made in Seremban, trucked to Singapore and is uh, assembled, value added and assembled uh, and hoist to the construction sites. This is how the uh, floor to floor height is being dealt with through some uh, small split unit aircon system. And of course, uh, when we work on this thing, we also like to show and share how the building was built and the process of construction and how much energy we have saved. We actually managed to uh, work out a building automation system where the energy used in this building is tabulated on, on, on real time. So when you go to the building, you will know there's a target uh, energy consumption per year and at different month of the year you will know whether you are heating or you are over consuming or you are under consuming and so far uh, our track record in tracking the building is that we are actually consuming a lot less energy than what is necessary and of course the fabrication construction these are more like just in time construction in the city area you have to fabricate a lot of things off-site and we are here you just hoist it up and install including, uh, that will also include the uh, curtain walling system. And this is how the building is transformed. Parts that we take out, parts that we add back, parts that we have extended. And from here, you will transform an old building uh, to a completely new building. Uh, these are the tracking of the different energy and tracking of the carbon footprint. I won't go into uh, detail, carbon uh, footprint consumption and emission during the construction and uh, 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 the, the, the working life of the building for the next 10-15 uh, years. And this is how the building uh, turned out at this moment from the old to new. And this is uh, the expression of the building when you look uh, up close. The issue is that when you understand the design uh, in a more uh, intrinsic and sympathetic manner, you also derive certain solution that is quite unique that is uh, in contrast with the surrounding building, which are mainly uh, curtain wall, flat curtain wall system. More details. We basically uh, use the fins also, I mean, usually when a building turn corner is always a place where you can have a bit of fun. So we are using the fins to articulate the different elements. The fin itself is also a uh, fins for installation of the night lighting uh, feature. 
and you also form part of the curtain wall system. Different elements. And of course, uh, when you look at the earlier uh, idea that we are interested in, the random aspect, the random aesthetic, they are all uh, manifested in self uh, in this building as well. In contrast with other uh, flat curtain wall, streetscapes, night lighting. Okay, now I come to the last project that I will show you. This is actually, uh, it's also a project that I work in phases through many, many years. Uh, this is a community building. In Singapore, there we have a lot of uh, community building where uh, in all housing estate, you will have a community center where residents can go there, spend their time, uh, learn some new skill. Uh, they have a multi-purpose hall. You can play badminton there. You can play basketball. And you also have an area where you can gather, have a larger scale function. And now perhaps there are also people who start to use uh, all this community building for, for wedding. And it's actually a fairly uh, ground up, uh, interesting uh, community building. This is the building. I, I won't go into how this building was uh, derived. It's a very interesting story, but I would rather cut the story short. This is a building that was built about 10 years ago. Uh, when we completed this building, uh, it, 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 it's actually quite a, a challenge. But what we have done is that it's actually a big roof with a series of freeform structure and a big plaza that give you a lot of multiple possibility of usage. And the building is done in such a way that uh, you, can, you, you can see through what is happening. And uh, all the, whenever there's any activities happening in the building, uh, residents will be able to see and know. Instead of a community building that is basically enclosed, this is basically an inside-out building. And, and, uh, and when, if you are, this photo is taken from the other side, which is actually a hawker center, a multi-story market and hawker center. So the whole complexes are intertwined with one another. And the main plaza on the ground floor is actually a shortcut thoroughfare for all the residents around this area going into the wet market or the hawker center for food. And this is uh, what it is now. I mean, the tree has grown, uh, things have changed, and some colors added. Uh, the ground space is actually a very active space, uh, full of uh, installations. Sometimes it's for publicity, sometimes for art installations and things like that. And what happened is that a uh, couple of years back, we were asked to look into adding additional space. And there's no more space to be added other than adding a space over a basketball court. And as you can see, this building is very tropical, uh, very, uh, we, uh, we are basically using the essence of the tropical design to develop it. But when we move into the new section, which is over this basketball court, we have to build over the entire basketball court. So the new building and the old building are very close to one another. The question is that how would you use the tropical design ideas and how again can you develop it in such a way that uh, the two buildings uh, can work together and at the same time retain some of the essential feature of the uh, uh, the, 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 the flow of air, natural lighting. At the same time, the, the, the existing building, all the windows will not be blocked. So this is the essential program. We are asked to work on the, I mean, basically to fulfill the function, we have to look at a, a very big box. But if you were to put a big box, I think it will destroy the entire design. So how do we actually uh, maneuver, see? So these are uh, large multi-purpose space that we need. And what we thought is that to, we have to keep the basketball court. We will extend the plaza. So the plaza will extend out. And the large multi-purpose function can actually be developed on top and how to go about developing it in terms of uh, architecture maneuvering. We will have to make sure that the, the, the existing floor plate together with the new floor plate have certain relationship. and. Uh, we tend to use a lot of glass to allow view from the existing classroom area to look through, through the, through the new building. And how lights and ventilation can be uh, maneuvered. And some of this is also more for uh, fire code requirement for smoke dispersal and whatnot. 
and we also uh, need to cover the space in between to allow a continuous extension of the uh, ground plaza. And on top of that, uh, there's a skylight to be introduced and things like that. And the skylight is also not a cis, a seal skylight is layered to allow the air to flow through. And of course, uh, this side is facing the eastern sun. Screening, all that will come in and become something that is important. And how to go about developing the screen again. And of course, uh, I mean, in tropic, we always have rain. And how to go about dealing with rain. And you have the layer skylight to allow for ventilation. And when it rain, rain will come in. And how to go about collecting the rain. These are all very pragmatic, simple things. But if you think about it careful enough, it may be some uh, interesting uh, design generator. Of course, uh, we, I mean, in between the building, if you can introduce greenery, or introduce greenery to the rooftop in different area, and if you are able to harvest the water and pump the water back to irrigate the buildings and all that, these are all very interesting uh, novel idea, which I think is uh, very good for sustainability and reduce the consumption of water. And this is a series of plans. I'll go through this quickly. And screening... What we have done here is that there's, uh, we, we tend to design big space because we can't anticipate how the space to be used. And we use a lot of uh, movable screen to partition the space. So in such a way that you can actually use a large space in many different ways. And of course, the different multipurpose uh, spaces. And there's also articulation of geometry, a bit of fun that we are dealing with. And this multi-purpose room, they are also uh, made of a movable screen. You can actually open up all the screen in such a way that uh, other than the envelope, the whole space can be integrated into one large function room again. And in other circumstances, they can form three smaller little rooms for smaller classes. And these rooms are quite fun. They are of different volume, different height, because we, man we manipulated the roof uh, for our roofscape. And this is uh, a terrace roof, which is uh, used as a small amphitheater. So this is how the section, the relationship between new and old. And this is how the building is going to look like. Uh, the colorful feature are mainly used for sunscreen. And at the same time, it also double up as for uh, water collection. And the eastern sun is uh, very well screened off both by the colorful sunscreen and also a uh, uh, perforated metal screen. This area is in uh, Jurong. Jurong being an industrial area, the industrial aesthetic is always an important part in our work for these particular projects. This is how it looks like, uh, the screening. And in a lot of our work, we, we like lightness. We always try to detail things in such a way that there's a relationship between things that is heavy, things that is very light, and of course, uh, things that is, uh, all these things can be achieved through proper uh, detail and industrial production. Composition. These are made of all form concrete. I think, it's, you know, I think in Malaysia it's pretty common. Different composition. Details. Details again. Boats and nuts, and these are basically it's an assemblage of L angles that uh, together with uh, perforated L angles and perforated panel, they are assembled together into some screening detail. And these are all uh, fabricated, I mean, the components are all made in Seremban, shipped over to Singapore. And we always have to work with a lot of details that allow for. Uh, different fabrication and some of the components that we are working on they are actually fabricated through laser cutter in China from China which is the cheapest place where you can get things done so you have to go into a lot of the sourcing and value engineering to allow uh, some interesting architecture to happen and this is a transition from the old building to the new and in between that's where we inserted a series of the vertical planting uh, uh, there will be a lot of cripple that go through all the cables to climb up to soften the interface between the new and the old. And the cable are also the cable that used to suspend and hold the so-called the rain sculptures. 
This is the sun screening. I mean, of course, you can do it in a more regimental way, but this is a much more artistic way of screening the sun. We also we decided that we need to screen about 50-60% of the sunlight, and we can achieve it in a much more interesting manner. And this is the large uniform space at the third story. When you're inside this space, you always relate to your home ground. You're always uh, in the residential surrounding. The outside is brought in. And with all this class, the classroom at the other side, they can see through and they are not claustrophobic. In the sense that the integration uh, becomes fairly effective. And of course, this is uh, the rain sculpture itself where when there's raining, the water will be collected through this series of uh, anger panels and they are being channeled in a different way to the collection area that lead to the water de detention uh, tank. This is interesting in the sense that when there's rain, this is also a classroom where there are a lot of uh, kids using it. The kids will sit around, see how the water is cascading down. It's quite an interesting way to enjoy a, raining, a rainy day. Different color composition. And this is the last slide that show uh, how the rain sculpture itself uh, also become not only functional but as an artistic installation uh, in the entire setup. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Thanks. <laughs>